a canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church under his Beatitude Metropolitan Onufri of Kiev, and all Ukraine is facing persecution today, as we all know, as we see every day. The state and the schismatics want to entirely evict the church, the monastic brotherhood, the seminary, the academy, the church administration from the Kiev Caves Lavra, which they have inhabited and prayed in for a thousand years. Next, they want to move on to the Pachai of Lavra. Attacks are carried out against churches, monasteries, and diocesan administrations all across the country. Uh, violent attacks. People are injured routinely. The question is, why is this happening? The Ukrainian Orthodox Church, in the person of its uh, its primate, in the in through the synod, has repeatedly condemned the Russian war. The Ukrainian Orthodox Church has repeatedly shown itself to love its Ukrainian homeland, to be patriotic. They have helped the sick. They give shelter to the homeless. They've repeatedly made donations to the Ukrainian army. Now, whatever you think of that, the question is, why is this offensive to the Ukrainian authorities, to the Ukrainian state? The Ukrainian Orthodox Church has separated itself from the Moscow Patriarchate. Before the war began, they repeatedly emphasized that they did not want to separate from the Moscow Patriarchate, that their status of broad autonomy which is actually greater than the autocephaly of some churches, they always said it was optimal for them to carry out their evangelical mission in Ukraine. After the war began, that was no longer the case. And being part of the Moscow Patriarchate hampered was an obstacle for them to carry out their evangelical mission. And they separated themselves. Metropolitan Onufri has spoken of this as a complete break. He no longer commemorates Patriarch Kirill as the authority over him. So why is this offensive to the Ukrainian authorities? And schismatics, why has the persecution of the church only increased in recent months? The answer is, of course, in some sense, very complex. There's much history. There's enmity between peoples and religions. And on another hand, on another level, it's very simple. And Metropolitan Anufri gave a few statements this week that give us that answer very clearly. Generally speaking, the answer is because the Ukrainian Orthodox Church is at its core a church. It is a religious organization, if we can use that word. It is a religious body. It is it's defined by its faith in Christ. It is not defined by its nationality. It is not by, defined by the nationality that it isn't, unlike the schismatics who exist solely to be not Russian. The church is supremely Christian. The church is being persecuted because it maintains this Christian stance. Now, let me explain what I mean by that, making reference to Metropolitan and Ufri statements, and why this is offensive to the Ukrainian nationalists, the schismatics, the authorities. His Beatitude made a statement to, uh, earlier this week to the faithful of Khmelnytsky, Khmelnytsky, where they are facing persecution, they're, they're being attacked, their churches are being taken away. He's appealing to them, he's strengthening them, he's comforting them. Here we have this article, Metropolitan and Ufri, must be, we must defend our churches, but without malice. He says, today the Lord has allowed you to suffer with him. It's a great honor for a Christian when he suffers with Christ. I understand that it's hard for you that there's a lot of untruth, but the Lord also endured lies. And we know that the Lord endured silently. We should thank God for everything. This doesn't mean we should give up and be passive. We must protect our holy sites. It's a call to action. We must defend our churches and monasteries by legal means. This is obviously a huge difference between the canonical and schismatic churches, by legal means. But we mustn't have malice against people, against those who attack us, who abuse us. In this case, he's referring to the nationalists, the radicals, the schismatics who are violently seizing churches. Defend your church, but we mustn't have malice. That is, that is supremely Christian. Love your enemies. Christ prayed even for those who murdered him. We mustn't have malice against those who are attacking us, putting our babushka, our priests in the, in the hospital, who are stealing our churches, who are abusing, leaving our churches empty, who are desecrating the altars. We must pray for all that the Lord may strengthen the good in the good and give the evil a spirit of repentance so that they understand that when you abuse another, it's a sin and you abuse yourself. We mustn't have malice. 
And the major issue is that Mitropolitan Nufri, as a Christian man, as a supreme Christian example for the Ukrainian people, he applies this same thinking, this same way of spiritual way of life to the Russian people. There was a provocation against him reporting that he has supposedly is a Russian citizen. He has Russian passports. So his beatitude put out a statement explaining that he does not, in fact, have any kind of valid Russian passport, that he is a citizen only of Ukraine. At one time, he was a monk and a student at the Moscow uh, Theological Academy at the Saint Sergius, Trinity St. Sergius Lavra. He was there when Soviet Union fell, and so he kind of de facto received Russian citizenship because he was permanently registered in Russia at that time. He explains the history, but the important part is here in this article, Metropolitan Nufri responds to media provocations. I have only a Ukrainian passport. Again, you see the important part here. He says, unfortunately, bad relations between Russia and Ukraine, the collapse of the CIS, especially Russia's war against Ukraine, have destroyed his hope of living in peace with one with between the two countries and now i don't consider myself a citizen other than of my native land ukraine i don't know what politicians consider me but that's why i consider myself i don't have a russian passport this is the important part but i'm not ham i won't sparrow a boil of honey with a spoonful of tar as they demand of me i separate the tar from the honey the evil from the good right in our terms he, he doesn't throw the baby out with the bathwater I condemn Russia's war against Ukraine and consider it a disgrace to angels and men. He, he condemns it as he has continually done. But I am deeply grateful to those Russians who accepted me when my Ukraine turned its back on me. He's referring to the fact that he was not accepted into the seminary in Odessa as a young man. And so he went to the seminary in Russia. I'm grateful to God that in Russia, I met kind, sincere, and god loving people whom I still want to be like today. This is the problem. For this is why the church is persecuted, because although it condemns the war, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, the Beatitude Metropolitan Ufri, do not give themselves over to hatred, to malice of all things Russia. They condemn the war, and yet they maintain love. They maintain love. Christ loves everybody. Christians are called to love everybody. Metropolitan Ufri loves everybody. This is the problem. He doesn't seethe and boil in his hatred of Russia, which is what the schismatics and the authorities expect of him i've seen even ukrainian scholars saying that the ukrainian orthodox church it's as if they're provoking the ukrainian government by not denouncing russia and the russian church harshly enough not as the schismatics do of course we know that the schismatics in fact as we said they exist only to be not russian they are a organization of malice we see this every time another church is seized and another Old woman is thrown to the ground, and another priest is dragged by his cross. We see this every time uh, the fake Metropolitan Epiphany Domenko publicly calls him and his synod publicly call for the Ukrainian Orthodox Church to be kicked out of the Lavra, to be completely banned in the entire country. Nowhere do you find the canonical Orthodox Church, Ukrainian Orthodox Church or its faithful making such calls. They condemn the war and yet maintain their love. They do not seethe and boil they are not consumed with hatred because of that they're com repeatedly condemned as russian sympathizers as provocateurs as uh collaborationists because they maintain a christian attitude as exemplified by his beatitude metropolitan anufri of kiev and all ukraine